everybody. You're here at Facebook Live, right here, completely alone, except the cameraman, uh, William, here at the church today. And we are recording today for Facebook Live. As I told everyone last week, what we want to do every Friday is to give you information on your mental and spiritual health. And so today, I'm gonna to be sharing just some strategies. If you have cabin fever, if you have some anxiety, some things that you can do, or you can assist people in your family so that they can make sure, you can make sure that they are well during this time period. Thank you so much for joining. I, I see the feed is, is coming up. Uh, just go ahead and give a major shout out. I don't wanna shout out uh, folks. You know, folks get kind of jealous when you start shouting out. Uh, but we thank you that you are joining with us today for Facebook Live. Uh, I'm going to pull some information from a little book I mentioned last week that I picked up in England about uh, depression and anxiety and share some things with you. If you are experiencing anxiety during this time period, it is completely normal. Uh, the first thing that we need to know is that anxiety is when you have worry, and we all have moments when we are anxious. Uh, maybe you're worrying about your children, you're worrying about your health. But of course, in this time period, many people are worrying about their jobs and their families. Uh, for example, we have both of our young people at home. Now, they are not children, Elijah and Michaela. They're doing their e-learning. And Monica and myself, we, we have been worried about them. We want to make sure that they are taking care of themselves, uh, that they are healthy uh, when they walk outside to walk the dogs. Of course, you've got to give that list of things that they're supposed to do in reference to social distancing. And so worry is something that's natural, but uh, when we begin to worry all the time, worrying about a variety of things and that our mind begins to race around worry, you've moved into the area of serious anxiety and stress. Or maybe you find yourself being very irritable because you have been in, in the house for quite some time. You maybe are angry this is also a sign that anxiety is beginning uh, to move through your spirit in a way uh, that will not be healthy for you. Or possibly it could be that you don't have any motivation, that you want to sleep all of the time. All of these are signs of dealing with some form of anxiety. Now let me stop here and mention one thing that we have in our community. There is uh, this secret that we have. We don't want to talk about mental and spiritual health. Uh, we dismiss people. Oh, that person is crazy. Uh, we use these terms uh, that marginalize individuals. But everybody deals with some form of anxiety, deals with some form of, of depression at some point in your life. Uh, but when it is extended, then you know that you're moving into the point, moving to the point of where it is unhealthy. So I wanna give you some strategies today. If you are dealing with anxiety and stress, we are all dealing with anxiety and stress and how we handle it during this time period can assist us to make it through this pandemic. Again, it's natural. It will happen uh, that you'll feel stressed out, but let me help you out today. I just wanna bless you uh, with several things if you are feeling anxious in these times. The first thing as a strategy to deal with anxiety and stress is to breathe. Yes, in Genesis second chapter, verse seven, uh, we read about God breathing into us, bringing life to humanity. And so one of the things that we have to learn is that every breath that we take is a blessing. So I want you to remember to slow down, inhale and exhale, and breathe. And there is an ancient technique that has been a part of the faith tradition for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's called a breath prayer, where you simply say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Slowly say those words, breathing in and breathing out. It lowers your anxiety. Now, when you are feeling anxious, when you're feeling anxiety, you're feeling a lot of stress, you also are putting stress on your immune system. So you're unable to fight a certain bacteria and viruses 
when we are highly stressed out because we, uh, the way the doctors explain it, all these things are happening to our body and our body is not working at an optimum level at that moment. So the first thing is to inhale and to exhale. The second thing that I want you to know is about self-compassion. Self-compassion, being compassionate to yourself. What happens when we are highly stressed and when there's a lot of anxiety, we end up being incredibly hard on ourselves where we think that what we've done is not only terrible, but we think it's the end of the world. Uh, so we create a disaster or a catastrophe as if there's no way of getting out. Stop yourself, breathe, breathe in and breathe out, and offer yourself that simple prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. Slow yourself down. Now, the next strategy that I want to give you, you're going to see these strategies that I keep mentioning about breathing, uh, about these prayers. They're going to pop up on, on the screen. And so the next thing that I want you to see is that uh, you've, you've done your breath prayer. Um, you, you recognize all of this. You're slowing down. You're doing all of that. That's good. Uh, but one of the things that you've got to do if you want to take uh, anxiety and stress down is that you've got to sleep. You've got to get a good night's rest. When your body begins to talk to you and you can barely keep your uh, head up, you're constantly nodding off, you need to rest, even if it's a nap during the day, uh, because your body is speaking to you, saying that I'm tired. Again, your immune system cannot function well if you're, if you're tired, and your stress level increases when your body is not working at its full and optimum level. So get a good night's sleep. If you can't get a good night's sleep, take a nap during the day, a little short power nap. Whatever it is, it will assist you to bring down your anxiety and your stress. Another thing that we have to do is I know we've been locked up in our homes. Sometimes you just have to go outside, walk around the block, get some fresh air. It will help you keep the social distancing. Uh, with everything that you do, but just walk. A simple walk will bless you to bring down anxiety and stress. Now, I want to give you one that is really powerful. It is called gratitude. By simply counting your blessings, simply sharing what you are thankful for. I'm thankful today that I'm on Facebook Live with you. I'm thankful uh, that I can speak to you at this moment. I'm thankful that we have a cameraman who's way over there uh, who is recording this right now in this huge church by ourselves here recording this for Facebook Live right now. I want you right in the feed right now. I want you to say what you're grateful for. Go on, list those things. Uh, put some emojis up there right now. Thank you. Uh, and put those things that you are grateful for. You're bringing down your stress level. You're improving your immune system just by being grateful. Simple things that we can do while we are sequestered on quarantine, sheltering in place, whatever name you want to utilize, be grateful. Slow down and be grateful grateful. Now, the next piece that I want you to know uh, that if you want to bring down your stress and anxiety during these periods is something really simple. Listen to some music. I don't know what uh, song you'll listen to or band or group, whoever it may be, but something that will lift your spirits. And music has the ability to do this. Uh, the sound and what happens. There is a whole science around sound and how it affects your body. Uh, there is a theoacoustic music theory, theology, acoustic being sound and theory, uh, that there are writers that are talking about this. And there is a whole tradition of looking at uh, the neurological uh, aspect of music. And so just by listening to music, you can put yourself in a different state. It happens on Sunday all the time when the choir sings. It happens when the soloist completely goes in. 
in the African American and African tradition, uh, we talk about uh, the Holy Ghost and that possession moment when we say people go in. There is something happening with the sound to our bodies and to our movement. I did some writing on this a few years back. I had the privilege of being able to speak at uh, Yale University for the Beecher Lectures. And a part of the research that I did and the presentation of the lecture, I talked about the sacred sound within the African American tradition. That when you hear people speak, especially within church, uh, what we call the hum or the hoop or the squall uh, within the African American tradition, that that sound is identical to a sound that you can trace all the way to Mali in West Africa. So let me give you a little, little map here. Start in Chicago, the map starts in Chicago. You make your way down to Mississippi. And in Mississippi, you have particular sounds that are similar to Chicago. But what is interesting is that the guitarist in Mississippi is playing the same sounds that someone in Mali is playing. But here is the crazy thing. The griot in Mali, when the griot is telling a story, has the same rhythm of when the preacher closes in a message, whether you're in Mississippi or Chicago or New York. And so this is what happens. It is called a double entendre, is that when you hear the preacher close in the sing-songy way in which the preacher closes, that sometimes we love to joke on, but what's happen happening is, is that there is a sound that speaks to us on a sub-level, that speaks of our ancient past. And so many times when people are shouting, not just about the Lord has made a way, but in the manner in which the preacher is speaking, they are also hearing a second form of theology. They're hearing the fact that all that we have been through, from the transatlantic slave trade uh, to uh, the enslavement period to Jim Crow and lynching, but yet the sound, uh, the culture, the fact that God is speaking, because the griot in Mali, when he would use that sound, was saying that you are hearing a word from God and from the ancestors, and we have carried that all the way to Chicago. Now, that was just a little nice little lesson that I wanted to give you all, but it's exciting to know that the sounds that we even communicate today go all the way back hundreds and hundreds of years. So let sound bless you. Let music bless you. So this is what I want you to do in the feed right now. Put on, name some of the people who bless you. A musician, maybe it's a singer. Uh, I'll tell you someone that I, uh, I love very much. Uh, there's a variety of people I could mention, but there's a band. My, my favorite band is a band called Snarky Puppy. I absolutely love this band. It's about 15, 17 guys. Uh, the person who plays uh, the organ is a gentleman by the name of Corey Henry. Uh, the organizer of the band is a gentleman by the name of Michael League. He plays the bass. He can go in. Most of them are from the University of North Texas. They were part of the uh, jazz program at the University of North Texas. And these fellas can just do it. No, no, no singers. It's just a jam band. If you really like that kind of funk jazz, they really can do it. And so anytime I listen to Snarky Puppy, it always puts me in a different state. My son, Elijah, he listens to Snarky Puppy when he's studying now. It puts him in a different state. Uh, we went to see Snarky Puppy. We were gifted uh, some uh, tickets by our deacon ministry. It's one of the best concerts I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but they put me in a different state. Uh, now I can mention all kinds of singers, but go ahead. There we go. Okay, go ahead. Put those names of the people who bless you. Who are the artists that bless you? Use that when you're feeling a lot of stress, when you're feeling a lot of anxiety. Now, there's something I may, may get in trouble from the more conservative people in our congregation and those who are watching on Facebook, but I want to mention another way for you to deal with your anxiety and deal with your stress, and that's finding something funny. Uh, we like uh, funny movies that, uh, in our household, and there are two movies that kill us. I'm just saying that just, you know, it's just the way we operate in the Moss household. Two movies, and they're gonna put up uh, some of those movies I'm gonna mention. One is an absolute classic. Um, you'll have your black card revoked if you haven't seen the movie. 
It is called Coming to America. I don't care how many times I watch Coming to America, it kills me every single time. It kills me. Just, I love the movie. He's got his own money. Baby, he got his own money. Love the whole thing. John Amos is actually one of my favorite characters uh, in there, Mr. McDowell. He does such a tremendous job. I've always loved John Amos. For those of you who are Good Times fans, you know who John Amos is. He's Mr. McDowell in the movie. The other movie that is, is a real blessing is one we fell in love with in our household is Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite is phenomenal. Uh, it's silly, but it's a great film. There's really no cursing. There's no sex in it. It's just funny. It's strange. It's goofy. Uh, but every time we watch it as a family, we always find something new in the background or something that we missed that Napoleon uh, uh, did in the film that we missed before. Uh, and the characters are so quirky and they're so strange. But that's just the way we operate. So coming to America, Napoleon Dynamite. Hey, I want you to list the movies uh, that really just kill you. I mean, I've got a whole list of a lot of other ones, comedies that we love. But that also helps to reduce your stress. Laughing, just laughing until it hurts. Or maybe there's someone in your family who is the best storyteller and the person uh, you love to hear tell stories because they're so funny. These are simple strategies as you are sequestered, on quarantine, sheltering in place, that can bless you and bless your family. I want to thank you for joining us for Facebook Live today. This was just a really short thing. Just wanted to be able to share with you as you are dealing sometimes with stress and anxiety, that these are some strategies uh, that you can deal with. Next Friday, again, we'll touch base about how we can deal with these issues around stress, anxiety, depression, anything dealing with mental and spiritual health. We want to be able to serve you here at Trinity United Church of Christ. Now, coming up on Sunday, I'm really excited about Sunday. The message for Sunday is what the world needs, is what the world needs. And we're going to be looking uh, at Galatians on Sunday and examining in this moment uh, of the great adaptability uh, or the great adapt adaptation is what has been called now. There's the Great Recession, there's the Great Depression, and this is being called the Great Adaption or Adaptability that literally our nation and our world is changing before our eyes. And I want to talk about that on Sunday, about what do we do in the moment of this adaptation? What are we going to do as, as a community of faith? What is God calling us to do? And what does scripture say about this unique moment in history? I thank you so much for joining us on Facebook Live. I hope that this little short little video will bless you today, it'll give you some things to do. I hope that you'll have some gratitude, that you're gonna slow down and breathe, inhale and exhale. Maybe, for those of you who have not seen Napoleon Dynamite, maybe you'll watch Napoleon Dynamite, or maybe you'll watch Coming to America once again. Uh, but whatever it is, make sure that you're injecting something beautiful, compassionate, and loving into this world, and you're taking care of yourself. May God bless you, and may God keep you, and I will see you next week, Friday at noon, for Facebook Live.